deemed us worthy of having. You know what I mean? So with those jobs that people deemed us worth, worthy of having, you were not eligible for the big deal. I mean, the, uh, uh, the new deal. The new deal offered low budget housing. The new deal offered uh, 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 the GI Bill, the New Deal, you get affordable housing loan, FHA, and things that like that that we have been able to take advantage of since 1970. 1970, you do understand the Depression ended in the 30s. You see what I'm saying? 1970. So, my grandparents had to meet, get married, have my mom at 47. She had to grow up and at 24 have me in order to be eligible for the New Deal and the GI Bill. So it was brothers and sisters fighting for this country, fighting, killing, stealing, robbing, doing everything they could do to be the best Americans, come back and can't re reap the benefits of being American. But they told you FDR was your, was your guy. They, they also teach you that Lyndon Baines Johnson signed the Civil, Rat, Civil Rights Bill. And when he signed the Civil Rights Bill, see, he was looking out. You know what Lyndon Baines, uh, I, can't, I wasn't there to hold a light on the conversation. But you know what Lyndon Baines Johnson said after he signed the Civil Rights Bill? We had these niggas in check. And these, this, this is allegedly a quote. Again, I wasn't at the head, but this is what was told, taught to me. We had these niggas in check for the next 60 years. Here we are, 55 years later, 56 years later. Mm, you do the math. Shout out to my man, Michael Wade. Thank you for the assistance. Shout out to my man, Ramal. Thank you for the assistance, man. It's all good. Thank you for the assistance again, man. Thank you for the heads up. I got DJ Nunu from the Truth Radio in the building. Much love, Nunu. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the support. Please hit that like button. Please hit that share button. I need my people to hear everything that I'm saying every Tuesday and Saturday going forward, and especially on Sundays. I got a new show coming out. Actually, I'm a guest, but hey, well, that's neither here nor there. Now, See, these people are not educating us properly. And if they're not educating us properly, then we're not getting the proper education and we're not excelling and we're not learning at the, at the rate we should be learning. And if we're not going to learn at the rate we should be learning, what, what the hell are we doing in these institutions of high learning? First and foremost, the school system was not designed so you can excel. I repeat, first and foremost, the school system was not designed for you, white Americans, Latino Americans, or, 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 or no other Americans to excel. It was designed, the education process is put together so you won't, you get enough education so you won't kill somebody. Do you understand? That's all of it. Oh, well, you're going to learn and then you're going to be a doctor. No, 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 no. And, and I can prove this by telling you this. Lecture style teaching that most of us have been privy to, meaning a person standing at the front of a classroom preaching to you and uh, 25, 32 other people in the class only affects properly 20% of the classroom. If you know that style of teaching only affects 20% of the classroom, why are we still doing it? But again, we're improperly educating our young people. Abraham Lincoln didn't like black folks, as I stated earlier in the conversation. Abraham Lincoln created a, he was like, hey, after this war, yeah, we ain't going to be cool, so y'all can either kick rocks and flip-flops or y'all can stay here. And then, uh, and then after they realized, ho, oh, oh, they kill, they kill Abraham Lincoln after they realized, hey, these black people, they know how to do all the work. They are the farmers. We're going to starve to death. Wait a minute. Uh, four years after emancipation, they are in Congress. Wait a minute. So guess what? Now, all of a sudden, Jim Crow segregation, redlining, and things of that nature. The Ku Klux Klan, funded by the United States federal government. Don't believe me? Look it up. Yeah, yeah. This is a good thing about this. No one has to take my word for anything. Look it up. I'm opening. You know what I'm doing? I'm taking the cover off, off uh, uh, rabbit holes. Go down those wormholes, rabbit holes, whatever, breadcrumbs, or whatever you want to call it. Follow what I'm saying, and I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. I'm not going to give you any erroneous information. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to leave you out there stranded. You know what I mean? So with that being said, as I stated, George Washington, he never told a lie. Yeah, so why don't y'all tell us about how a brother taught him how to knock him, uh, 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 immunize himself against smallpox that saved him in the war? Why y'all didn't tell him that? How about this? 
the Negro Conference, you know, like the Black Expo. That's been going on since the 1820s. Oh, the 1820s, you mean 40 years before this uh, emancipation, 1820s? Yes, indeed. Just to name a couple of people, Langston Hughes' grandfather was there, and w, our great uh, ancestor, W.B. Du Bois, his grandfather was there. This is what I'm telling you. See, you see, you see where I'm going with this? The education process is flawed. Therefore, we're not we're not taking advantage of it the way it should be. Not, and the reason I brought this up, this is problematic teacher. I think she was in Georgia. I didn't write down the state, but I wrote down. This is what she said. This woman said, don't be like Breonna Taylor because she was hanging around the wrong people. And that's why she did. She hanging out with the wrong guys. He was a drug dealer. And that's why the police came in the house and killed her. She teaching your kids that. My kids that. Because see, ain't no such thing as I don't live in that state. Those my kids. Because there's somebody in all 50 states doing the same thing. Doing that exact same thing. So even if you hear it once, it's one too many times. You see what I'm saying? One too many times because you're hearing this. You got young people hearing this, man. You got young people being told that Breonna Taylor is dead due to her erroneous behavior. That's a lie. Just like Abraham Lincoln is your friend. Just like the pursuit of happiness. Just like just about everything else. And again, if you really want an education, I want you to watch this documentary again by the name of The Amendment. It's on Netflix. They land on there too, but you know what? It also opens up rabbit holes. See, what they do is sell this propaganda about Americanism. Hey, everybody American, and we get the kumbaya and hug and kiss, and we're friends. Meanwhile, they teach you about these coalitions where, you know, uh, everybody work together. I talked to the homie Big Illinois last night. And I asked him this question. He, he, we were on the same page. And I'm going to ask you guys this question. Let's say you get together with a bunch of other communities in your town. Uh, disenfranchised uh, Caucasians, white. because that's Black and white, not really a construct. Nobody was black or white before they got here. Shout out to the homie, the brother on Bill for this network. Number one, Chief Rock and Jersey Burn. Thank you for the support, brother. Please hit that like button. Please hit that share. I need as many likes and as many shares as possible trying to beat this algorithm. You know what I mean? But back to the point. You get together with different communities, disenfranchised white people, disenfranchised Latino people, disenfranchised Jewish people, just disenfranchised Asian people from all over Asia, right? It's only one difference when you, it's, you know, the difference when you make that uh, change from a coalition to working alone and making sure you're okay. It's the problem. We get together. It's this rainbow coalition, which I have no issue with. I don't have an issue with anybody. I ain't got time to be hating nobody. Go ahead on with that, right? Now, wh when I'm getting together with this rainbow coalition, this is what else I'm doing. We're getting together, and we're going to get equality, and we're going to get this, and we're going to get that, and then we're going to take over the government, and boom, it works. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, it works. We overthrow the bigots, the racists, the, the people who discriminate, whether it be via gender, via culture, via, via what you look like, whatever, right? We got rid of it. Everybody go back to their natural corners, right? The Asian people have their own culture, their own religion, their own uh, diet, right? The Latino people have the exact same thing. The poor white people have the exact same thing. We don't even have our own diet. We've, took, we've taken bullshit. Excuse my language, and turn it into our diet that's that's not healthy. That's killing us. We're gonna go back to still disenfranchise schools and things of that nature. The reason I'm bringing this up is let's get together, clean our own houses, create our own culture, our own things. Like I said earlier, when you move and with purpose, you come together. I'm on the phone with number one Chief Rocker, I'm on the phone with DJ DJ Knox, I'm on the phone with the greatest, I'm on the phone with Sonya. I'm on the phone with Joe, and we, we decide this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to teach our people, and this is what they're going to move, learn so they can move forward, right? My man, Diggy Dale. Shout out to Diggy Dale. Uh, send out positive vibes to Diggy Dick, Dale and his family, man. I'm not going to go all into why, but hey, man, Diggy Dale, a good brother. If you if you stop and pray today, pray for my buddy, Deacon Dale. Just say, hey, shout out, you know, send send good positive vibes to Deacon Dale. It's, it's needed, and he's worthy of it, and so is everybody else in the world for that matter. But he's struggling right now. We're going to uh, pray for Deacon Dale. 
But if you don't educate yourself, see, the reason we struggle is not because we have a uh, have the pad no ignorance and we have the pad no deviant behavior and we're just bad people. We're lost. See, one thing about one thing about information, it empowers you when you find out. That the cotton gin was not created by Eli Whitney because why the hell would a white man create a fucking tool to make work easier for slaves, for people who aren't slaves? No. When you find out that brothers invented stuff like the golf tee, and when you find, get this information, you stop doubting yourself. You start realizing, hey man, I can do anything. When you find out four years after people were in bondage, they were running the government. When you find out no matter, look at all this. You got a brother like Robert Church, who pretty much created Memphis, because Memphis had went bankrupt. Robert Church came through. He had a couple of whorehouses after our spots, but he took that nefarious activity and refunded Memphis. Guess what else he also did? He funded our sister Ida B. Wells, who were going around the country giving information about how great we are. And then guess what else he did? Those, you know, and, uh, and, uh, 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 um, Memorial Day this year is the 100 year anniversary of the massacre that took place in Tulsa, in Oklahoma. He helped fund some of them brothers and sisters in the, in the, in the 1891 to 1915, uh, yeah, 1891 to 1915, they created Tulsa, Oklahoma, Greenville, Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, Black Wall Street, y'all know about. So when you find out that Robert Church is doing this in the 1800s, you mean to say 1800s, they did 1800s? That we were in in bondage? Yeah, he was doing that. You mean to tell me, as you watching that Cleveland Browns game, and you see Nicholas Chubb getting it in, that his uncles and his grandfather in the center of Georgia owned the town that is still standing today, a church that is still being occupied today? We did that? In the middle of enslavement? It lets you know that people tell him that you're less than and what things that you can't do and things you can't accomplish. That's a lie. That's in order to keep you in check and put you in a situation to make you feel less than. And this lady is sitting in the classroom with my kids, your kids, our nieces, nephews, cousins, and things of that nature as our neighbors. But see, I'm going to hit you with this. No such thing as uncle and aunt. We are Africans. There is no, in no African language, there's a word for uncle and aunt. Okay? That's why you meet African brothers and sisters. They have 10, 11, 12 names, because those are the names that their parents, sisters, and brothers named them as well. That's why. So, uncle and aunt is a thing that was created over here. Those are your kids. Those are your kids. And here's another thing. We continue to bring our culture over here, no matter if it was beating out of us, like putting rice in our head, hair, braiding our hair, putting rice in it so we can bring it over here and, and survive. Another thing. Uh, uh, that the term I see you it translates in the original language or, or several different languages throughout the uh, continent I see you meaning uh, you accomplished that I see you and look at us a thousand years later we still using it most of us don't even know where it came from it came from the continent you see what I'm saying so when you know these things you do better and that's why you struggle you struggle due to lack of knowledge uh, I think it's Proverbs. There's no danger in the counsel of many. Meaning, when you get together, you're safe. When you're separated and fractured, you're in danger. That's the Proverbs in your Bible. You know, the Bible that, that our good brothers that, 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 that use the word hotel wrong, because all it means is, is peace. Uh, the hotel people, the woke people, that same Bible that tell you, they, they tell you that's the white man trying to enslave you. See, it's only going to enslave you if you don't know. My people would de perish due to lack of knowledge. This is what I'm talking about. Speaking of lack of knowledge, this is why I changed my show. Mississippi. We heard the whole world. Texas. most de Second most, Texas, California, two biggest states in America, right? Alaska as well. Two most populated states. That's why you got uh, uh, electoral college votes the most in those two states. You went to Texas, California, you might, you might not even have to do that now. You can walk to the presidency, right? But Texas, they lost their power, they lost their water, the whole world heard about it. Oh my God, oh my God. They can't, they ain't no power, they freeze them death in Texas. 
Jackson, Mississippi is going through the exact same thing since that happened. They ain't got clean water down there. They ain't got power down there. They freezing down there. And nobody's talking about it. Because Mississippi is 34% populated by people that look like me and you. Jackson, Mississippi is 87% populated by people that look like me and you. And I get, damn, I forgot to write the other town. It's another town down there, too. And I'm going to think about it. I'm a, as I go through the show, I, I remember it. I didn't write it down. But these places... We down there struggling. We down there freezing too. And ain't nobody talking about it. But why? Why? I got my man said G. He's in the building. Thank you for the support on the uh, Spreaker.com side, man. Appreciate it. Why ain't nobody talking about the brothers and sisters struggling in Jackson? Because it's we down there struggling. See, again, this is why we need to create entities throughout the United States of America so we can uh, see, oh man, I don't like the urban league. So what? Get in there and change. I don't like that bit of CP. White people created that. Get in there and change. Or how about this? Create your own shit. Create your own, create your own get down and fix things. But see, all this pointing out of what's wrong. Well, you wrong, H. Rel, because it's 83% of us in that city. Okay, you said that now, what? Most of us are down there struggling. See, enough of being the smartest kid in the class. Because smart is relative. Intelligence is relative. We confuse well-informed with intelligent. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to keep saying it. Intelligence is the practical application of the information that you swear by, that you swear you, that you laud over and hold over people's head because you're so damn smart. So if you're not practically applying that information, you're dumb as hell. And you ain't doing us no good, letting us know how smart you are, how many books you read, and that type of nonsense. Okay? But... We need to be getting together and putting our brothers and sisters in a better situation. Because there ain't no way in hell. Look, look, them folks up in Flint, we was on now. We, oh man, the people in Flint, yeah, guess what? Your man Obama up there drink, taking midget sips out the water. Oh, it's clean now. Well, go ahead and drink it, bro. I'm going to need you to take a big gulp of it, but you didn't. Because you, you had diarrhea all over Air Force One. I don't want to hear that, Barack. And you pissed me off, and I ain't been rocking with you since. Uh, besides the fact here in my city, they're doing the Obama library. You putting people out of their homes so you have a library that your ass ain't never going to fix it because you don't even live here no more. And you ain't from here. But that's neither here nor there. But the folks in Mississippi are folks down there struggling, man. And, hey, the people who like me, who used to be like I was, and your vote don't matter, these are the consequences of not voting. Because if we had a bunch of people in there who gave a damn about people no matter what they look like, Ain't no way in hell Texas or Mississippi would, would have not had their uh, power plants, water plants winterized so these people wouldn't be out there struggling, man. And by the way, for those who don't know, you think most people, most of our folks live in New York, Detroit, Cleveland, Atlanta, I mean, uh, Cleveland, Philadelphia, New York, I mean, uh, L.A. No, most of our people live below the mason Dixon line between Texas and Florida. That's where the most black people are in this country. So when you hear about the people in Texas struggling, it's a lot of brothers down there struggling. Louisiana, a lot of black people, folks down there struggling. Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, South and North Carolina, Kentucky. It's a lot of black folks down there. Because if you didn't know, our ancestors that were in bondage outnumbered the people who had them enslaved. But again, they don't teach you that in school, so you never really think about it. So if you don't think about it, it's not important. If it's not important, it continues to go on and continue to go on. Our people continue to suffer. And we're going to stop that this week. And going forward, because I got I got my I got pistols loaded every week with this type of information. man. No more sports for me, man. Chief Roger, Michael Way, Trey and, and, and Vince, they got that. Miss Powell in the building. Much love. Thank you for the support. Please hit that like button. Please share on your social media platforms. Next thing, see how everything just going in, in, in play? I just spoke about voting. If voting don't matter, a lot of people, like I used to be, I got my man Chris, uh, uh, Big Mo, and I uh, uh, almost called you Chris Nez, that's one of the homies, uh, Big Mo in the building, much love, thank you for the support. Check him out on Tiger Park on Sundays, man, he's a good brother, need y'all to support him and everybody else who got a podcast, everybody bring what, what needs to be bought. I want y'all to know about this bill that's being passed, that has been passed in Georgia. Since voting don't count, 
and they ain't nothing gonna change. And see, they ain't got our best interests in order and all that break and roll that we've been here and people like myself used to spew. But I had a different angle on it. But I mean, if I was saying that I was saying it, just because my angle is different, I'm still wrong. But it's called HR, HB 531. HB 531. You know what that does? HB 531 reduced the voting places in the state of Georgia. Black people complained that there wasn't enough voting places. Black people turned Georgia upside down this last election. But guess what? They reduced the voting places. Oh, guess what else? As they reduced the voting places, black people vote, the majority of black people vote on the weekends. No more voting on the weekends. You got to damn near have an act of God. Oh, oh, mail-in ballots. You can't get in. You're sick. You're taking care of your elderly mom or whatever, or elderly relative. You got to damn near have God co-signing before you can get a mail-in vote. How do we win that? How did the people in Georgia win? Mail-in votes. So you can't do that anymore unless you get unless you get God, Jesus, and four more white people to sign off on it. Then those long ass lines that you created again, you've created long ass lines in Georgia. And guess what? The president is elected in November. His office is being voted on in June. Hot ass Georgia in June. You can't give people water in line anymore. If voting didn't count. And this is just the game. Why are they jumping through hoops so Warnock and the other cat won't be in there? Who's standing up? Who, as far as we know, don't be, be don't don't be no fool. Because guess what? It was some uh, get downs passed the other day. Uh uh oh oh uh, the get down passed the other day for the uh, minimum wage. Five Democrats didn't get down rule. You know y- your friends talk about that probably Saturday or Sunday. With the jaw jackets. But so we ain't got no friends, man. Ain't got no for you English majors out there. Ain't my damn language. Let me see how well you're doing Swahili, Jack. But if it ain't important, why are you taking something from it? Because guess what? If you was walking down the street and you threw with a beer or a sandwich and it was a person who was without Standing there, hey, can I get that, homie? You would throw it in the garbage, you'll get them because it ain't important to you no more. Now, if you take it from it, ah, uh, that means it's important to you, or that means whatever you're giving away could hurt you. So, while we're doing this, we need to be aware of this, man. Because if they do it in Georgia, that's just a test. Because then they do it in Kentucky, then they do it in Florida, then they do it in Texas, then they, do, they try it in California. See, California, they halfway decent on this because they already understand this this Eastern foolishness ain't going to survive. And then just just newsflash, it's more Latinos than anybody in California and they ain't going for it, right? But be aware of what's going on around you is my point. The, the trial of the century, Chauvin, biggest trial since O.J. Simpson, I would say. I got my man Ben from BS Street, the leader of the forecast. Check us out Monday at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on BS Street Network, BS Street Radio. I'm sorry. But I think it's Derek Chauvin. Or I don't give a damn what his name is. Officer the Murderer Chauvin. Jury uh, selection is going on right now. And again, if you're a registered voter, you got to be in the jury pool. But see, what we need to be is mentally prepared. For the trauma porn that I believe is about to happen. He's going home, people. If you ask rap, he's going home. I don't trust the system. You shouldn't trust the system if you do. You're 30% retired. Yeah, I said it. But we need to be aware that, see, our ancestors continue to put this information in front of us. When you don't know your history, you damn it repeat. The reason I say he's going home is because of this. A year ago, when this happened, a little less than a year ago, when this happened, USA Today poll said 60 percent of the people in the United States of America said that was wrong. That was cold blooded murder. How could he do that? The whole world saw it, son. But guess what's happening now? It's down to 30 percent. 
30% of the people that look, that look at that thing, they say, uh, well, then you know, uh, this could have, it could have gone any way. Uh, this dude is not a killer. You know, he was within his boundaries as a police officer. So when you go home, just continue to keep your eyes on the prize, man. Keep your eyes on the prize. Look, understand you in a fight, you behind enemy lines, and you need to galvanize with your folks. And once we establish an awesome foundation, then we can start kumbaya with everybody else. We got to get right. We have to get right. I'm not saying don't accept any assistance, but if we not right, assistance is only def deferring a problem, pushing a problem down the road. That's what assistance is. And we can't do that anymore, man. So for that. So be prepared for that. The biggest problem we've had over the last, I don't know, 100 years has been this COVID-19 thing, right? COVID-19 is killing, allegedly killing our folks at a long rate. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a scientist. I'm just going with what I'm hearing, right? That's what I'm hearing. And it's okay. Now, a lot of our folks are not going to get this uh, uh, vaccination. I'm our folks. I don't trust it because it's a virus. And what was the COVID that used to be killed by Lysol? What was the symptoms of that? But that's I'm not having that. I'm not here to have that conversation. I mean, I had this conversation. Arkansas, I mean, Arkansas, uh, Alaska, Mississippi, Arizona, Texas, and several other states are opened up wide. The reason I'm bringing this up is this. It looks like rich folks are out here getting this vaccination. And they're saying, okay, we cool. Because they fly into other states to get it out of poor people's hands. I'm not telling nobody to get it. Because, damn it, I'm not. I'm scared of this shit. But, it's awful strange that rich folks are going to get it. And then they're saying, hey man, uh, I got your vaccination. I'm going to be a little healthier than you. Now take your ass back to work and continue to make me a billionaire. So, again, this is the result of an inability to galvanize our communities, get people who are going to work in our best interest in office, and then we'll be able to be safe in our own communities. So, keep that in mind, man. Look, I ain't here to tell you what to do because I don't think no kids listen to my show. I don't think nobody had their children listen to H-Rap. H-Rap ain't PG-13. H-Rap rated double R. I'm almost X, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm profane, and I'm cutting back on that. Man. Shout out to my pastor, Reverend Dodd, and shout out to my man, EJ. He's a pastor, too, so I'm going to cut down on the profanity, but I'm not going to cut down on this information, man. Your president, the dude who, uh, he got our back, even though he had uh, uh, Sister Hill back when they put in Clarence Thomas. See, I don't do that uh, crime bill thing. Because Maxine Waters see Dolores Tucker, Bobby Rush in Chicago, several several thousand black people who were put in office. They was with the crime bill too, pastors throughout the country. They was up with that. So I ain't finna do the crime bill, but I am gonna say the dude Clarence, Clarence Thomas, Joe Biden was in charge then. And he could have stopped that. But he didn't, because he didn't see a problem with it. Because, you know, he used to run with Strom Thurmond. Look up Strom Thurmond. See, I'm opening up these rabbit holes, I mean, uh, wormholes for y'all. Go down, follow these breadcrumbs, and you'll find out who Joe Biden really is. I don't trust him. Trust no politicians. See, that's something else we need to start talking about. Trusting politicians. You trust your friends. You trust HRAP. You trust your cousins, your aunts, uncles, kids, loved ones, people in your community. Because we traditionally are working in the same direction. Politicians are not to be trusted. They are civil servants. What, what Civil, meaning civilian. It is a derivative of the word civilian, servant, person who's supposed to work for you. So you ain't got to trust him. You ain't got to like him. He ain't your friend. He ain't your homie. Keep your damn uh, hot sauce talking to Charlemagne, the God out your purse. You ain't got to say because you, your dad is Jamaican, you smoke weed. You ain't got to be on the who shot Malcolm X talking about you ain't know the, the criminal that's everybody in the whole damn town knew. Bucker. You know, so we, we we don't need them to be our friends. Do our bidding or get fired. But Joe Biden is standing behind uh, this push in Alabama 
to uh, unionize Amazon.com. We're going to see how much he's standing behind him with Jeff Bezos, who stepped down. See, Jeff Bezos, not slick. This is opinion right here. This is pure opinion. Jeff Bezos stepped down from the CEO of uh, Amazon so he could do the bidding and keep his face clean. See what I'm saying? Oh, uh, well, well, that wasn't me. Uh, that's a new CEO. But he, mean, meanwhile, he in the background pulling the strings. So if these brothers and sisters get their draws, kick them ass about these jobs, you know what we're going to start doing? And I, 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 I compel us to do it anyway, start going back in these stores so our brothers and sisters who work at these stores can keep their jobs. And Jeff Bezos had to give up $40 billion a year, though, because he got a divorce. And from the day he gave up that $40 billion until September, to my birthday in August, he made $70 billion. So if he ain't willing to unionize and says, oh, man, they make $20 an hour. I only make $12 an hour. Stop counting other people's money and count yours. You negotiated 12 and you're happy with it. But Jeff Bezos is making money hand over fist and, that's, and, and it's your hand putting it in his fist. So these people working in these hot ass things and then you got positions at his company. You can't, most jobs, you get a raise and you get a raise and you get a raise. You max out of his place. So we're not going to, we're not just going to sit back and watch this. We're going to make Jeff, people like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk uh, 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 uh Elon Musk, they're going to start paying the people who work for them. Otherwise, we're not going to deal with them. Hey, man, if you read, uh, my man said, he said he's not feeling good after taking the shot. Got a little soreness. We, we wishing you a speedy recovery or a quick adjustment or whatever it takes to get you in the best condition you can be in. Said we're praying for you, brother. But these are the things, again, that I'm talking about, man. We have to keep an eye on these things, man. Just like with this vaccination, it's like Seb's was talking about. Is it safe for our children to go back in school? Let's not forget our young people are developing. Their bodies are ever changing every day. They're, 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 they're getting stronger because they're going some of them a pre pubescent or into puberty and they're young people. Remember that. They're developing at all times. So it's the safest place to be in the midst of a virus or a potentially virus infected place. See, a lot of people are putting our kids back in these schools because, again, we don't want to pay for that. Take your ass back in school. Get back to work. Enslave people. Enslaved to this debt. Enslaved to all this stuff. But are we are we is that is that the best thing to put our young people back in these schools? And again, we are allegedly the most powerful nation in the world. We got the most powerful military in the world. So, what is it going to hurt our, our government to open up the bandwidth to put our kids? And, and, and keep our kids in safe places. You know, because before this uh, COVID thing, you couldn't even say too much on TV without, what about the kids? But now put the kids back in danger. I don't know about you. Kids dirty as hell. When I was a kid, I was dirty as hell. I eat off the ground. You take a piece of gum out of somebody's mouth and just start chewing it. This is what kids do. Because kids only thinking about right now. They ain't thinking about, oh, I might have COVID. They ain't thinking about that. Kids thinking about, I have a good time. And that gum look good. Let me get some. Give me a piece out your mouth. I don't know if kids still do nasty stuff like that. But when I was a kid, I seen it. I, ain't, I used to eat out. I, I dropped something on the ground. Nobody, I'm putting it back in my mouth. Ain't nobody saying anything. Anybody tell my mom. But kids doing that. Kids take their finger in other kids' mouths. Kids do all type of nasty stuff. So how you going to start kids from spreading this deadly virus that didn't kill, allegedly killed over 500,000 people? So is that the best place to put our kids? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just watching out for it. You got the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson combining, and they're trying to hurry up and get us back out there. So, you know, it's just amazing to me how uh, less than a year ago, this is the most deadly thing in the world, killing people. Me personally, I lost 11 people in the last 12 months. I don't know if it was COVID-related. I don't know what the hell it was. I lost two people last week. Two people last week because of my man, Ken Slaughter. So, I don't know if we need to be putting our young people in this situation. My children are 27 and 23. They're going to be 24 and 28. So, I don't really have that problem. But your kids are my kids, as I'm telling you. We got to be able to take on that. We got to take on that thing right there. So, keep things in mind, man. We don't know what, it's, we don't know what it, this thing is. We don't know where it came from. And we don't know how it's going to affect us. We got young, young athletes passing out on the basketball court. 
You have baseball players developing heart conditions. Here, I might have something wrong with me. Y'all don't know. I, I ain't struggling. Now, I might be asymptomatic. But I know it might not be the wisest thing to put our kids in danger because the kids are the future. The kids are putting us in the best possible situation to excel in the future. So, now, I'm talking a little entertainment. And we're going to talk about this on uh, 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 Forecast Monday. Uh, Eddie Murphy might arguably be my favorite celebrity in the history of the world. He was flat out cool when I was a kid. Somebody I really uh, admired as a kid, and I still admire him as an adult. He's like the big brother you're, you know, who lived in another state or something. Uh, he had a movie called Coming to America come out. I'm not a gigantic fan of it. A lot of people loved it. Shout out to Eddie Murphy. Yeah, the next project that he had, hopefully it's rated R or something like that. PG-13 at the worst. But the reason I didn't like it is because it was a family movie. It's not that I'm not a family guy. I'm not saying that. Y'all know I'm not saying that. But it just wasn't for me. But a lot of people loved it, man. Please watch it, download it. I tell you what, just, just let it run. man. Hit the play, let it run. If you don't like it, let it run. Run it again. I'm going to run it again at some point this week. Let it continue to be the number one played movie in America. Because guess what? If that's the number one played movie in America, Eddie Murphy get opportunities. And if unless if you don't know it, according to Steve Harvey and according to my eyes, Eddie Murphy is a dude who put literally damn near everybody on, damn near everybody on in Hollywood. You know what I mean? Uh, Arsenio Hall told a story on The Breakfast Club. Just show you how, how powerful and how aware Eddie Murphy is. Uh, Arsenio Hall and Eddie Murphy are good, very good friends. They asked him how they became friends. He said, uh, Keenan Ivory Wayans invited him to the comedy club. He said, man, come on down here. Eddie, Eddie want to meet you. He said, Eddie Murphy got out the car. He was standing there. Eddie was like, hey, man, my mother said you look like me. You don't look like me, nigga. Those, those were Eddie Murphy words. They became friends at that point. They continued to be friends. Uh, um, and uh, he said he didn't know Damon Wayne. And Eddie didn't know Damon. And Damon walked up doing this gay character. And then he snapped out of it. Everybody laughed. Damon Wayans, the next time you saw Damon Wayans was in an original Beverly Hills cop. Dave Chappelle, Mon Lawrence, Chris Rock. This is a dude. That's why I'm saying please support Eddie Murphy in that movie. I didn't really like it. Most people, the good thing is 80% of the population does like it. And I'm, I'm loving that. So we got to support the brother Eddie. We got to support the brother Tyler Perry because they're doing big things. With that being said, man, I'm about to log off. My show ain't going to be as long as it used to be. I ain't have that much to talk to. But guess what? I got another show coming on Saturday. I'm throwing some stuff. And my man, Robert Orr and TC, they got a show called The Jaw Jackets. Under the, uh, I got my man, Newport 100, in the building. Big up to my man, Newport 100. It's ain't in the building. Much love to you, man. Thank you for your support. Ron Jay from Canada. He's in the building. Much love. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Please, please, and thank you. Subscribe. Now, uh, what I'm, you know, it's just, again, man, we have to put ourselves in a situation to continue to educate each other, continue to educate ourselves. And that, oh, that's what I was saying. I lost my train of thought when I saw my man, New Football Hunt, good brother. He might be doing something soon. He, he, he kind of hinted towards it. I'm like, and me and Big Mo talking about uh, a new part. Me and Big Mo talking about uh, doing part two to the show Saturday. If you're available, let me know. I got to check them out. I ain't got all the details. I'll get at you soon. But, uh, man, the, 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 the bottom line is this, man. The end of the bench sports is no longer. If a, a, if, if a sports story come out, you know what? I am going to talk about this. And then I'm out. Uh, if a sports story comes along, I'm going to talk about it due to the relevance. But otherwise, I ain't talking about no damn sports no more. I don't give a damn. You know, sports is cool, but it ain't for rap no more. The damn name itself, I shouldn't be even talking about sports. H. Rap Brown. Salute to the brother, H. Rap Brown, in prison in uh, Georgia, federal prison, for a crime that somebody else could confess to. They still got him in uh, lockup. Shout out to the brother. Shout out to the brother, the ancestor, Stoker Carmichael. Michael. But I don't want to talk about the situation with Dak Prescott. Shout out to Dak Prescott. He just signed a contract. I didn't look at the details. I just know he did. Actually, I posted the details. I didn't even look at it. But the reason I'm bringing up Dak Prescott is this. Everybody's scrutinizing our brother Dak Prescott for getting money. They talking about the damn salary cap. 
KMA. Look that up. That's how I feel about arguing about a brother's money. Because guess what? I didn't hear one word about the Stanley Cup when this 40-something-year-old quarterback went down to Tampa last year and they gave him $50 million guaranteed dollars. I hear no money, nobody talking about $100 million they gave Aaron Rodgers two years ago. He, he 38 now, 36 or 38, so, you know, he was going to be old, too. But when it comes to these black men getting money from these damn NFL, NBA, Mason League baseball teams, there's always somebody with a microscope talking about the damn Sally Cap. Sally Cap ain't got nothing to do with us, y'all. And for y'all who love sports, which I used to, and I, deep down inside, I still love sports. I'm going to talk sports. I'm going to talk trash today. I die about sports. But I'm just not going to give it to no air time. But what I, what I am going to bring this up is this. The National Football League, NBA, and MLB, anytime they're in contract disputes, you know what they don't do? They don't open their books. See, the salary cap is created to make you believe they're sharing things and they don't want their advantage, which is a lie. Because in a few days, these NFL teams, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they're going to get a $250 million check and then in October they're going to get another one. That's a half a billion dollars this year that ain't got nothing to do with the te television revenue and jersey sales, right? It's going to be fans in the stadiums. Watch this. But the reason I bring that up is this. The NFL used their statistics. They've leased out their statistics to Fox and ESPN. When you have Yahoo Sports and all these other entities that have fantasy football places, they have to pay the NFL for that. Why do you think the NFL wouldn't let the Denver Broncos sit out? Because the fantasy numbers would have been off. And then it's people who don't know anything about football, don't give a damn about football, who winning money on fantasy and on gambling. And the NFL is getting a cut of that. So, look, how about this? That Dakota Rain Prescott took the job of one Tony Romo. And then Tony Romo retired. If Jerry Jones had anything that resembled a damn brain in his head, he would have signed Dak Prescott to a five or six year extension that day. Or this, once he played that season out and, and Tony Romo retired, you were supposed to sign Dak, Dak Prescott to an extension and he would be making $25 million now. Or even probably less because he was a fourth round pick and Dak would have went for him. Because I was in the fourth round, I got a contract for three more years that y'all got to pay me on and then you're going to give me another 75, 80 million in extension. He'd have took it. So none of that empathy for some fucking billionaires. If you have enough money to finance your own stadium, finance a little shopping center outside of your stadium, the dude in uh, the Rams, he got the damn high, uh, 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 his wife got more money than Brinks. So he paid for his own stadium. Y'all got enough money to put a billion dollars into a building. You got enough money to get these dudes their money. So I ain't trying to hit that, man. So stop falling for the banana and tailpipe with that sports thing, man. It's fun, and that's it. These dudes, richer than a motherfucker, and they tricking you. And that's why I had to stop talking about that goofy shit. With that being said, man, I want to thank each and every one of y'all for tuning in to the End of the Bench podcast on Built for This Network. Shout out to No One Chief Rocket, Jersey Burn. Shout out to the First Lady. Shout out to uh, DJ Mad Knox, Big Illinois, Joe from Houston Buster, DJ Purplelicious, uh, Mooka Dean. That's my crew on Built, to, Built for This Network. We in this together. Shout out to everybody. Uh, everybody who has a show. Me, Wilkes, Dog, Ben from BS3. Another extension of the family. Shout out to the homie Big Mo, man. Anybody who got a show, shout out to you, man. Thank you all for tuning in, man. I'm bringing this heat every twice a week, every week. Tuesday, Saturday, I'm bringing this heat. We're going to talk about social issues. We're going to talk about what's going on in the world. I'm going to interview people. Uh, uh. I'm finna get it right, man. You know, you ain't never gonna be able to tune in here and say, hey, man, it wasn't, it ain't, it ain't what, what you, what you need, man. I'm getting what you need, man, not what you want. So, uh, man, salute to everybody who got a show on here. Tune in, keep tuning in. Uh, and uh, sister DJ Red Beauty coming on in about a half hour, about 40, 38 minutes. After that, you got my man Mandela on and his wife. It's a, it's a super dope show. It's a whole lot of fun. We gonna have some fun. We gonna cut up acting food. Y'all know acting food on there every week. And, man, just continue to do your thing, man. Uh, send a prayer out to my homie De De uh, Deacon Dale, man. Deacon Dale's a great person, man. Funny dude. Love he's a family man. Support him, man. Send, send that positive energy out there to Baltimore. We, we, we're praying for you, Dale. And, look, man, um, Saturday I'll be back. Sunday I'll be on here uh, uh, with the homie Robert Oil and TC. Uh, they going to do it under my umbrella, but it's really their show. It's called the, the Jaw Jackers. They, they, they invited me in. 
super dope. I want you to uh, support the homie. Watch my page. Support the homie EJ with Collective Perspective. Uh, seven o'clock, seven o'clock, seven thirty in that in that range uh, on Sundays. Man, we 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 trying to enlighten people. We are trying to put people in the right state of mind. Man, it's, it's a great conversation. From great people. Uh, Kelvin, uh, uh, Dave, my man, uh, Robert Roy. He gonna be on the. Show. I'm gonna be on his show. Uh, 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 uh on the Jaw Jackers with TC, and, and and my man EJ. Man, sometimes they invite me on, but I'm watching every week. No matter, no matter. They talking about a, a wide range of things. Uh, I think Big Illinois will be back maybe tomorrow, maybe, you know. And if uh, you want to continue to help with the production of the show, support it in that work, hit that cash out, the end of the bench, T-H-A-E-N-D-O-F-D-A-B-E-N-C-H. I want y'all to do me a favor, man. Go to my website, the end of the bench dot com. Subscribe to the, uh, subscribe to the uh, joint, man. So when I start selling this merchandise and everything, I can just hit you with an email blast. Continue to support the network. Hit the subscribe. Hit the share, man. Y'all already know I got to send salute and shout out to the homie, the ancestor, the uh, 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 Combat Jack, Reggie O'Shea. Dream, he, uh, he he put me on to the uh, dream those dreams and man up and woman of the live those dreams. Because life without dreams flows in black and white. Life with dreams flows in technicolor surround sound. I've taken that on as my mantra. He overseeing this. Shout out to uh, everybody in the background who chose not to hit that like button. But you did. You came in and hit that like button. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. For, if you're watching and didn't want to create a uh, uh, get down, please come in at some point. Just show some love with us, man. This your man, H Rap, man. This built for this network. We in the building. This is the end of the bench podcast, hosted by myself. Man, thank you guys for the support. And as, as I say every week, uh, stay on top of things, because if you ain't on top of things, you're on the bottom. Holla at your boy. Two fingers, one word. This your man, H Rap, and I am. We are built for this network, for the strong, not the weak.